Bet you this becomes an episode. Huh? Bet you this becomes what? an episode. What are you doing? Because it's like the you walk so, up and there's the way it staggers down. Hi everybody. Uh, student accommodate. No, I'm not going to start that way. Hi everybody. We are at the University of Canberra with the birds. And this is what you would call a bush campus. So uh, rehabilitated old farmland, about 10 to 15 minutes out of central Canberra. Full of kangaroos. Yeah, we just saw heaps of kangaroos. And then this is uh, student housing by John Andrews from 1970. 1973. Uh, never been here before. Follows a pretty interesting time for student accommodation throughout Australia, where they were really adventurous um, sort of typology, that there was lots of experimentation. We don't see that much anymore, do we? No. Hecklers. Just, just zip I think it. they're telling us a roll intro. Oh. Oh, look this colorful guy up there. Oh, wow. Is that a rosella of some sort? I don't know. They're all very colorful. Yeah. They love that tree. That's what it is. Yeah. Let's go have a look. Come on. Let's go, come on, come on. So we're going to check out a few John Andrews buildings. What you need to know is that John Andrews is one of the best architects Australia's ever produced. I feel like he kind of isn't that well known to the younger generation. Would you agree, Kev? Yeah. Well, he's probably quite well known in the United States and Canada because he did CN Tower in Toronto, but also the Harvard Gund Hall mm -hmm. at the Harvard GSD. So yeah, he did a lot of work uh, in North America and then he was invited back by the government to do some substantial projects here. And the story he tells, whether it's true or not, is he was offered one of three gigs. You can either do the High Court, check out that episode. Uh, you can do the National Gallery of Australia or you can do government offices. And he said that, well, there's only so many galleries and courts you can do, but there's going to be lots and lots of offices. So I'm going to do the offices. You can see what's happening here though, he's designed one basic module and then he stacked it up. It's kind of Biage uh, before Biage was Biage. Clothesline. Oh, nobody's here. Because of COVID? Because of COVID and it's in between semesters. So it's actually kind of lifeless. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, it needs a tidy up. It looks like it hasn't changed since 1973. He's located it on a hill. So it's exactly the same housing module, just sat, not one on top of the other, but just up the hill slightly. So is it actually a hill? Or is it actually yeah. got things underneath? No, this is actually a hill. Oh. Yeah, oh. which it rises up to the other student housing by somebody else. So when we get to the other end, you'll see it's just one module because that's where the hill starts. So he's, instead of going straight up, he's come along the ridge. Look at the um, corner windows. Oh yeah. They probably, all have it. Probably cute little study space. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, so he chose a pretty steep embankment to do this. Then. Yeah. And then it flattens out here um, to a bit of a plateau. So he's deliberately gone for probably the hardest bit. So he only has to design really one building and repeat it 40 times. Look at these uh, other skylights are space below. So to the laundry below. Ah. So he's got these two, I think they're two story um, uh, uh, student housing, but then the look utilities at, at the back. Look at the frame view there. Oh yeah. And he's really thought about the roof of the one below, like instead of it, like there's flashings and all that that you expect, but it's actually quite neat, that curve is mm. quite a nice foreground for the, uh, these little corner windows. Not too bad from 1973. Not at all. It's actually in really good nick. But I imagine that's the beauty of building out of concrete. And you can imagine in the 70s, if all the buildings we've gone to in Canberra are out of concrete. So <laughs> they were probably doing the best quality concrete in the entire world at the time. And also being a student apartment, a student housing, they get beaten up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be resilient. So this is where it changes. So we've got the same sort of module. They all rose up and they're the same number of houses, but this is where then the hill goes down and he starts to lose, lose um, a few modules. 
And this would have all been bush around here. Yeah, look at all those apartments. What, why? Yeah, that would have just been bushland and farms. It's not as if it's got any major infrastructure or anything around. Oh yeah, I love it. So thinking about the way that it steps down the hill that way, but also the way it steps up this way. So then you, those corner windows get more of an oblique view as these ones step down. Oh, yeah. That. Oh yeah. Wow. That's pretty efficient, isn't it? Design it once. Repeat. <laughs> Array, matrix. <laughs> like, imagine that. He, he had to draw all this by hand. Imagine it nowadays. Design it once and then just array. <laughs> that looks hot. It's just, just beautiful repetition. Actually, kind of doesn't look real. Hmm? It doesn't really. Look, it doesn't look real. I'm taking a photo. I don't almost call this some like an Australian version of metabolism. Is it though? I thought metabolism is very much about certain parts have different rates of decay and needs replacing though, isn't that whole metabolism thing was about? Yeah, I guess this is kind of permanent. I, I just like the modularity of it. The modularity is and pretty the, amazing. It's a big building with a lot of a, a lot of homes in it, but it it's broken down into lots of smaller parts which makes it feel less bulky. So this is the path that goes up to the university, the, the main part. But everyone walks past it. So there's almost this hill town like quality to these little um, repeated modules yeah and, and it's sort of seen really obliquely really and I think that's that's how it's meant to be seen and that, they, they do sit sort of obliquely they're 45 degrees to the path not only is it stepping up the hill in two different directions it's actually also stepping back from each other so the footprint of each one starts back a bit so it breaks down into a much finer grain but yeah it's definitely that hill town quality you know because that's what traditionally they are like because they just repeat it the same kind of materials generally the same form but mm. just repeat it yeah I think that's that's his charm but you know at the same time we've got some very sort of Australian touches with the the curved bullnose metal sheeting yeah as part of the form that's a good point this kind of uh, vernacular of the Australian bullnose this was a bit before that before Glenn Merkett started really laying into that whole romanticism of the shed yeah keep your distance it's only stay away. She males only. She males. <laughs> oh, look, the sun's coming out. No. Oh yeah, and the gum trees, the, the shadows start playing on there. Yeah, but, and it's the you know, it's as much I'm not usually a fan of the the whole eucalyptus green colour. Yeah, this is actually very suitable. It's uh, it works for the landscape. It works. Yeah, traditionally that's when people choose eucalyptus green because it's it's. Uh, it works with the landscape, but this is, uh, this actually does. Yeah. It literally is the landscape. And so there you go. Each one is broken up with the same staggered staircase as well. So you don't get this clear line through. Look at those corner windows. Like, it's so cool. I wish the one that's actually got a blind open or something, we can actually see through it. Mm. Like the corners disappear, so it's that piece of concrete, just this little C-shaped bite. Isn't this nice? That like that that person's door, which is inward, actually gets this uh, this view out into the landscape, even though oh, it's yeah. sort of buried. Yeah, and it's protected. Yeah, it's covered. Look at the light hitting it too. It is weird how you could imagine when you first moved in you wouldn't be sure which one's yours because they are actually eerily identical. Yeah, that's why they need the, the signage to tell you what, what block, what level and what rooms. <gasps> I thought they were like whole apartments, but they look like they're just rooms, individual tiny rooms. Yeah, this would have said level one rooms one to six. Hey, Kev, Phil. I reckon this is pretty dope. Uh-huh. Did, did you get it? It's dope, Kev. It's dope. Full power, 24. <laughs> Low right. power. I'm going to take some B-rolls.
Oh, there's like this common room. Oh, you come in the door and then there's actually a shared common room space with a little... Um, I can't hear you. Step up. Can't f***ing hear you. Huh. Kev, we're in a dodgy car park at the University of Canberra. Nowhere near the centre of Canberra. And look what I just found. It's a concrete bollard. That's just a concrete bollard, but this is one of Robin Boyd's concrete bollards from Churchill House. It's even got the chain hole. Why the hell is that here? Why is it here, Kevin? Why is it here? Some drunken student stole it. And put it somewhere really functional. Yeah. They're so conscientious, the students here at Canberra.